All right. Okay, so we're we're live and ready to go. Go ahead, Ray. Sorry. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Ray Andujar and I'm a professor in the Spanish department. And uh, today uh, uh, we wanna welcome you to our, our event. It's called Voices of Spring. Some of you are familiar with this. Sometimes we do Voices of the Fall, Voices of Spring. Um, and this, uh, this it, it, we try always to bring uh, bilingual poetry to, to GSU. So today we are very honored because we have the Dominican poet Jaisa Jimenez. I'm gonna give now the um, the spot to Novia because she has a, a couple of, of words for us, and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and start. Wonderful, thank you, Ray. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, buenos días, uh, buenas tardes, I should say. Um, I'm Novia Pagón, uh, Assistant Professor of Spanish and Global Studies at Governor State. Um, so welcome, thank you for joining us. Um, before we begin the program, I wanted to give a couple of housekeeping notes, um, so be sure to mute your microphones. Um, there will be time at the end for um, question and answer for Q&A, and you'll be welcome to post questions in the chat or to unmute yourself during that time. Um, also, at the end of the event, um, we will dis distribute a link to a very brief survey, and we'd be grateful if the students in attendance um, could complete it. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge those who have made this event possible. Um, today's program is supported by the Governor's State University Intellectual Life Grant. It is also part of the Making Spanish and Global Studies Accessible to All project, which is made possible by the Department of Education's Undergraduate International Studies and Foreign Language Grant. The aim of the project is to create opportunities for students from across our campus community to access events, resources, courses, and study abroad related to Spanish and Global Studies. Um, I'd like to thank the College of Arts and Sciences, especially Dean Andre Merrick and Alexis Sarkeesian in the GSU Library. And of course, um, thank you to Rian Duhar for organizing the event and an extra special thank you and welcome to our guest, Yaisa Jimenez. So I'll hand it back to you, Ray. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, uh, Yaisa was born in Santo Domingo in 1986. She's a poet, a performer, uh, as a writer, she has written for the stage and for the screen. She has written about music for specialized media and also academic articles related to feminism, Afro-Caribbean culture and environment, environmental issues. Uh, her first book is called Ritual Papaya and uh, she defines this work as a collection of feisty poetry some of these points have been part of different international anthologies. She's now uh, pursuing an MFA in NYU. Uh, we want to welcome you, uh, say that it very, it's very nice uh, to have you here. Uh, in 2019 was the last time that I went, I was in Dominican Republic and uh, I was invited there for a book fair. And one day I went to a, a, a parallel book fair and I asked the person there to make a box for me of all the new literature that I should be reading. And uh, one of the books that I found there was Jaisa. And from the moment I, I found a, a beautiful poetry with a powerful work. And uh, since then we have started a, um, a relationship uh, that, that is very, it's, it's been very fertile. And, and, I, and I hope that it stays that way. So I wanna start by asking you if you can please talk to us a little bit about your beginnings as a writer, um, how you decide to become a writer and stuff like that. Of course, um, thank you everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to share this afternoon with all of you. And sorry for my English is not perfect, but I can try. I have my notes <laughs> and I was six years old and I remember my father had to go um, to exile to the San Martin. Um, those were the days uh, of Balaguer, a dictator, a kind of dictator we have in Dominican Republic. And I miss my father a lot in this time. And I started to read uh, reading poems for him and then I had access to little tiny books. I think um, Ray can remember Vanguardia del Pueblo, um, these tiny little books about politics and all that stuff. And the people think this is communism, but it's not. Uh, it's just uh, um, revolutionary ideas in a little books, in a little, um, come, um, we told, we uh, name it Pasquines. Pasquines, little tiny and um, lining books. And 
Uh, and I continue writing um, because Vanguardia del Pueblo inspires me. And at the school, I was una terca. A terca in Dominican Republic is like tough head, you know, una terca. I was, um, because I want to write everything. And I have, if I have the opportunity, I want to have the resolution of the year, uh, the school presentation, you know, it was so complicated in the time because uh, I just want to write my things and, and express myself. And I never stop. I never stop. And uh, because poetry, I started with poetry at, at six years old, uh, poems for my father, for the little bees in my garden. I love bees. Uh, I started to read to my mom and I, I said, mom, I have a new poem and she clapped and, and that was beautiful and I am in love and I fell in love with the world in many levels in that time and this is how I started. Um, would you be so kind and read us, share with us one of your poems, please? Of course, I can read in Spanish. Um, you know, I have... Uh, Let's see, the first one, it's solo para locales. Let me confirm it. Okay, solo para locales. I think poetry in Spanish is not just about the meaning, it's about how it sounds. And I think we can concentrate ourselves in that, in how it sounds. This poem, this poem, Burn, and in the middle of a meditation, it, it, what we, it was weird because I'm not a pretty good meditate person, but I have this um, line, siente el flujo natural de tu respiración. And that was beautiful. And I, I write solo para locales. Okay. Siente el flujo natural de tu respiración y sal a respirar leyendo contextos de izquierda a derecha. Llega a una calle abultada de las tantas que fuerzan una doble vía en los barrios cimarrones de este pedazo de mundo. Respira el smog mientras el sol del mediodía te corta la frente en dos. Acércate a las verdulerías en las aceras e inhala el olor de los vegetales que tienen tres días sin venderse. El ola preocupado de él o la verdulera, su sudor dilatado por las ganas de verte sacar un par de centavos de los bolsillos. Muévete a una pollera, a las 11 a.m. respira el olor a sangre que gotea desde la barra, el vapor del pollo remojado con agua caliente, el olor a tripas, carne, pico y pala, a óxido de machete veterano, a gente maquinando maniobras para que esa carne dé para todos en una casa abarrotada de bocas colgando de un sueldo mínimo. Ve al malecón, ve al malecón, a Guibia o bien Montesinos. Respira el hedor de un fallo que te quitó, el mar más dulce, cercano y bahiano de tus sueños. Corta camino y ve directo a tu hogar, a él o los lugares de la comodidad de tu alma. Y olfatea a los tuyos como viralata. Olfateate tú. Graba así el aroma de todo lo que en realidad importa, una larga memoria de lo que sí es vital. Respira profundo cada dato. Redirecciona ruta hacia el mar y exhala en la orilla. Cuéntale a la playa todo lo que respiraste. Conversen. Escucha a su salmuera eterna decirte mapas y rutas cosas y manifiestos, ruidos y predicciones, valores que enterrar. Y recuerda, dato importante, no olvides ser gentil contigo durante todo el proceso. 
Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. That was very nice. <laughs> that was very nice. So I'm going to, what we're going to do is I'm going to read the translation and uh, we're going to keep asking questions and then she's going to read poetry and then uh, we're going to, we're going to read then the English version. So this one was translated by Megan Van Nerysen and uh, says, fill your breathing natural flow and go out and breathe. Read context right and left. Get to one of the busy two-way streets that force their way into the wild ghettos of this part of the world. Breathe the smoke while the, midway, the midday sun turns your forehead in two. Get close to the street vendors. Breathe the smell of three-day-old vegetables. Listen to the greeting spitted out by the sidewalk sad woman sweating under the sun praying for the coins to come out of your pocket. Move over to the chick chicken butcher. Smell the blood that around 11 a.m. drips from the cutting board. Smell the chicken steam coming out of the feather peeling boiling water. The smell of giblets, meats, bones, and rust from the expert machete. See the people skimming ways to make sure there is enough chicken for all in a house full of hungry mouths hanging from a minimum wage. No, now go down to the malecon. We be a bitch or better the Montesinos statue, take in the stench that steals the sweet Caribbean sea of your dreams. Cut the road short, go back home, or whatever place that comforts your soul. Smell your loved ones as if you were a street dog. Smell yourself, engrave the smell of all the things you care for, the extensive memory of all the things that do matter. Breathe, take in every piece of data, Reroute your steps towards the sea and exhale by the shore. Talk to the beach, tell her about your breathing, talk to her, and listen to her salty stories about routes and maps, artifacts and manifestos, noises and predictions, values to take with you to your burial site. And the most important thing, please remember to be gentle with yourself along the way. I love that ending and that last part is very nice. <laughs> Please. About the meditation theme. They yeah, talk be, like gentle, uh -huh. be gentle. I really like that. So, you know, you said something very important before reading the poem. You said that in Spanish, it's important how the, mm -hmm. for you, it's important how the word sounds, the sound of the word. I would like to say that in English too. But mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I want to hear about, like, because I know that one of the, the many things that you do well. And uh, for, of the many things people know you for is for those poems that you upload to Instagram and your little performance of, of your poetry, you know, your spoken word. Uh, how do you get from the written word to the spoken word? Uh, it was pretty natural. In fact, I believe that Caribbean is here, understood, valued and respect at the level of you correspond to it and it sounds, the Caribbean sounds uh, needs to be understood. How the rhythm of the being in the middle of the ocean. For a long time, I watched movies and other materials that reduce the Caribbean to maracas or calypso music, and which in Dominican Republic, we don't play calypso music. And, you know, third world. This is the, the definition where the people have about the Caribbean. And I know, I know where I come from. And I value the complexities of the place uh, and the origin. And I talk about all this stuff because this is about the, the rhythm and the sound, the complexity in the sound of the Caribbean. And Dominican Republic has so many layers of sounds that I um, think poetry does not escape to this. And I understand uh, when people don't understand that because you have to be in the middle of the Caribbean to understand it. But sometimes um, when you see poetry or you, when you consume poetry or when you consume art, it's important to understand the origins and to hear what uh, and the, the poet, the, the artist want have to say about it. And this is what we are doing right now. And I'm pretty glad uh, 
I can do I can do it in that place and in that kind of scenarios. And a good part of communication uh, in the Caribbean it's with the body and with the sounds. And when I start to put myself in the situation of um, spoken word, I think, okay, the poem is not just the lines of the words, it's the way I move and it's the way my, my voice sound, is the way I represent the way my people and I, because I am my people, lives and moves and talk and demonstrate how strong they are or how, or how angry or how happy or how uh, involved they are with the environment. And this is why I start, but it's a romantic relationship with the, the spoken word because I have a romantic uh, relationship literally with all these little details I tell you right now. It's it's, um, I'm in love with the sound of the Caribbean. I'm in love with the sound of the people of the Caribbean, Dominican Republic. I'm in love with my place. And it's really um, a demonstration of love in this, in, this, uh, in this moment for me. So right there is right, uh, uh, you know, I, I love when you say, I love me, I love my people. So you have a poem that's, that is called Como Se Siente. So can you please share it with us? Yes, I can share Como Se Siente. And after that, um, our, uh, you know, our student, Sedona Smith, she's going to read uh, the translation for us. Fantastico. Bien. Ese poema se llama Que Se Siente. It's about a feeling. Um, but a feeling I can um, articulate what feeling is, but this is how the feeling feels. ¿Qué se siente? Si me dicen ven, pues yo voy. Podría bien hacer resistencia de la salada, de la que se amarra a la boca. Me vi pronto, muy pronto. Sacando y apretando otra masa de luz caliente e indolora cerca de una cuota incalculable de bien. Rozando la cera a las doce, quemando todo lo que soy, volviendo en resurrecciones infinitas, cubierta de cenizas y graznando sin partitura. Si me dicen ven, pues voy en forma de oxidiana. Y siempre vuelvo a tener que explicar mi belleza, muchas veces, demasiadas. El alma que insiste en salir de mis ojos no soporta no dejar lo que le toca. Y eso es siempre, tras cada cascada de fuego, tras cada cuna de escombros. Truena todo en mí con cada quiebre. Pero cuando digo todo, es todo. Y solo sé que el alma existe porque ella también truena, ella también teme derrumbarse. Uh, very good, very good. Now uh, we have Sedona. Right. How does it feel? If I am told come, I go. I very well could be salty, like the one one ties to the mouth and offer some kind of resistance. Suddenly I saw myself tied to another mass of light, hot, painless, something close to an immense quantity of goodness. Strolling the sidewalk at noon, burning everything. I am returning in infinite resurrections, ashes, covered, scoreless squawking, if I am told come, in rusty shape I go, always going back over my beauty, too much times too many. Out of my eyes, the soul insists out to jump. Can't stand leaving behind what belongs to her, always behind every fire cascade, behind every cradle of rubble. Thunders, everything inside with every rupture, 
And when I mean thunder, I mean it. And my soul alone is a certainty because there is thunder down inside because my soul alone fears too, the collapse. Muy bien, muy bien. Muchas gracias, Sedona. Gracias. Suena muy bien. That's the mysteries of translation, huh? Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, so, so Jaisa is from, from a neighborhood, close to the neighborhood that I was, that I, that I was born and I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Villa Duarte, which is close to the river, and she's from Los Mina. Now, um, every time that I will go to, you know, pass by your neighborhood, I will see the guys in the corner talking and I'll see them. They will be talking, but they will be kind of dancing. So it's about what you say about feeling the world. And for me, it was fascinating. And, and that's something that obviously reflects in my writing. But uh, I wanted to mention the neighborhood because um, Los Mina is one of the first, uh, como se dice enclave, one of the first, um, como se diría enclave, like uh, 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 one of the first places in the Caribbean that had a huge concentration of of black slaves, um, so enclaves, says Elena. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So it's a legendary neighborhood, uh, a legendary neighborhood because uh, you know our blackness is like that's the mirror of our blackness in Santo Domingo. So I I wanted to hear about a, a little bit, you know, learn a little bit more about your neighborhood and, and how mm -hmm. that permeates your your um, your literature. Yes, Los Mina is my um, dream place, um, and I've, I'm trying to be no, don't be, not be extra romantic, extra romantic with that. But it's my dream place. Uh, I remember every detail of my childhood, and my neighbor, the neighborhood of Los Mina, is a place for. I have uh, many memories of my. Uh, me grow up in that place. And many of these memories have become, you know, frosted memories with that extra something and that we put in our memories when we are very loved, you know, half true, half false, that kind of relationship with the memories. And you don't know when I start the fantasy and when the memory comes. And this is something important to me because it's my own memory, it's the way I see my memories. And the correct name of my neighborhood is San Lorenzo de los Negros Mina. And it was founded by black people and still is uh, in a wide world, mostly black people. Um, and as an Afro-descendant person, this environment and my reality mixed with the reality of the Caribbean and which is mostly black is like the consomme, the big soap. Uh, um, and we work in that kind of caldo. We, we work in a place, we work uh, with all the stuff in the same uh, ollita, how we say allá in, in, in the art. Uh, we become aware of how our country, Dominican Republic, hides our black history and you, when you are in this place, um, you realize a lot of things, actually, and these things are about self-perception, because Black people, um, we can have a really big problems when our country just forget about our Blackness. We have a situation with uh, self-perception, and that has to change and it's a personal journey to change uh, for change it and so looking this first to recover to the course of perceiving myself as a valid person this is this was the first situation and los mina become the place i see myself as a valid person because in this place i was a little child, little happy child with a lot of family, with a lot of neighbors and with a lot of blackness around me. And this is why Los Mina represent that kind of love to me. And I studied, res I studied resistance. My resistance and the resistance of the women of the, my country 
and the queer community and Afro people. But when I see all the information we have to recollect to understand ourselves in the middle of all of this and to understand the resistance, I just have to look to my past and my memories in Los Minas because we don't have a lot of information in Dominican Republic about our blackness. And we are 80, 82% Black people in Dominican Republic. It's a lot. And that kind of relationship with the Blackness make me feel um, so proud about Los Mina. And this is why I take Los Mina with me in every place I, I travel, in every place I, I talk, in every space I have the, the opportunity to talk about. Because if you visit Los Mina, as a, just a touristic place, which is not, you don't, um, you don't, you can't appreci appreciate the way it feels. If you visit a Los Mina as a, like being in a house for a doñita, for a, a mothers of the, 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 of the mothers of the, in, in the neighborhood, you can appreciate Los Mina, Los Mina as a place, not just a touristic place, you know, as a place, a living place. And this is why I, I ever, I, if I have the opportunity to talk about Los Mina, I, I, I talk about Los Mina because I love this place and connect me with my blackness in a really, um, what is the world? complete way. I feel complete when I see this place. Oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. Uh, and you saying that, you know, me thinking about Villa Duarte, just, you know, right there by, by the river, mm -hmm. that you feel complete when you see Los Mina and I feel torn apart when I see Villa Duarte because of the river. That was what we, the whole idea, that's how we grew up. Uh, can you read paperless for us, sin papeles? And yes. after you read them, uh, our student Maria Murillo is going to read the translation. Of course, this poem in particular had the situation. It's about an anger. I work with anger a lot in my work because I think it's a valid feeling in the correct um place is the, the imagination is the correct place and the art is the correct place to be uh, involved with the anger. And this person is an anger woman um, telling to her husband, uh, we broke up, but this is why we broke up. Sin papele. Bolo, tú nunca quisiste mis callos ni mi ombligo después de parir. Nunca me besaste la pisada. Le faltaste al respeto a mi sombra, Bolo. Tú nunca me prendiste una vela. Bolo, nosotros no somos de arena. Usted es cemento y lo sabe. Pegajoso, maluntao, atrevío y regretoso. Y lo sabe, sabe que si ve mojado viene terco y se pega. Yo soy una mujer limpia y con plomo. Usted y yo ya no comemos en la misma mesa. Bolo, ¿tú crees que te llevaste mi nombre y te comité un cable? Porque solito voló de nuevo a mi pecho y usted voló del diablo. No me robó el apellido de mi mai. Yo contigo saco sal Nunca firmé nada. Aquí no hay tinta que me ajuste a tu desgracia. Talking about anger there. <laughs> Maria now. Paperless. Bolo, you never loved my calluses or the way my belly button looked after giving birth. You never kissed the ground I stepped on. You insulted my shadow. Bolo, never... Never for me, you light in a candle. Bolo, we are not made out of sand. You are concrete and you know it. You are sticky, daring, 
Massey and you know it. I am clean, grounded woman, and you and I will not share the same table anymore. Bolo, you think you took my name away, but you failed, and then came back after storming out. Bolo, you couldn't take my mother's name away. I never signed any papers. Nothing ties me to you. There's no ink that ties me to your disgrace. And something important about this poem, it's um, one of my teachers in NYU tells me, oh, what a powerful imagines, a, a imagine, a, um, oh, a powerful picture of, te comite, a, no, 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 te comite un cable. And this is a phrase uh, from the woman in the, in, in the art. They say, te comite un cable, it's like, no more with me, don't talk to me, da. And uh, another thing about this poem is um, pegajoso, maluntao, atrevido y regretoso. In English, sound different, but in, 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 in Dominican Spanish, it's like um, that kind of words means something different. It's not just sticky, it's regretoso, like I'm not with you in your mess. And yo soy una mujer limpia y con plomo. This is how the woman in my country said, I'm a woman and I'm a strong and I, you have to understand it. And con plomo, plomo is like, a, like militar, something like, you know, they are so strong and I'm just appreciate that kind of, because I said it too, <laughs> I'm not. I love not. The, I, what I love is the sound of it because mm -hmm. you know, that the merengue in the 90s, in the revolution of merengue, the merengue started playing with the words, mm -hmm. trying at the beginning in the 80s, the merengue was trying to be on top of the instruments, you know, and, mm -hmm. and be in a melody with the instruments, like in love with the instruments. But in the 90s, it was about doing the instruments with your mouth. So the words become an instrument. So sometimes I'm going to pick a word like regretoso, atragantoso. You know, uh -huh. you remember la coco van, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Se quiere de cocotarse de huesarse el espinazo. No vacile mi amigazo venga corriendo este can a sudar la gota gorda bailando con coco van. So, I remember that time. Oh, that <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, you know, because, you know, we have students here that, that have, uh, you know, many interests and, and you are a student, but you also teaching uh, 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 a master's uh, degree in, in writing. So I just wanted to hear about your experience coming to the United States and, you know, in the middle of COVID mm -hmm. and, you know, all uh, how different is you for you being in Dominican Republic. And then because we know like there's a lot of Dominicans, they come very early. They come here in high school and then they go to college. But uh, you just jumped all the way to grad school. So uh, uh, I think it will be very, you know, uh, very good to hear from your experience as a uni as a college student here in the United States in the middle of all this, you know? Yes, it has been a strange and challenging experience. And all of you understand that because it is. Uh, it's not the experience we want when we think about uh, a new journey as a university uh, people. But, um, Zoom and the technology uh, has been a, a miracle to us. Um, this activity is because we have the technology with us. And this is something important to appreciate. And COVID give a lot of lessons we don't see it right now because we are angry, we are uh, confused. We need to explore our, that kind of feelings. We have um, the amount of depression right now, it's big. It's, it's important to, to understand this is something we have to say. And it's, um, it's, it's not just you, the people in general are having this kind of emotional situations and COVID put us in the, in the middle of the, the politic, political and, and energetical revolution. In my country, we have 
a protest right before the COVID and uh, the biggest protest we have ever. And right now we are fighting for the right to abortion in the Tres Causales in the, in the three uh, determinant uh, situation. And we are fighting a lot of stuff in the middle of the COVID. And as a student, that's, I, I think everybody uh, here have their own situation from your country, for your um, family, for, from the environment. And you have to take all of this and trying to be a good student. And I understand perfectly how it feels. But I think we are, we are privileged to have this kind of opportunity. We can be, um, we can appreciate the opportunity and at the same time to have this kind of feelings. Um, when you are a complex, everybody is a complex human and complexity, it's about this kind of feelings, being together in one body, in one mind, in one heart, in one soul, and trying to continue day by day, one day at a time. And it's important to me to have this kind of opportunity to, to share this experience in the middle of the COVID because poetry um, has been my, my salvation, my salvation in the middle of the situation. And I, I recommend a lot the poetry. I recommend even an anthology. It's called El Mar No Necesita Ornamento. You can see aquí. It's an bilingual anthology and a lot of Caribbean poets, female poets with us, the strongest voices I ever hear. And they are, um, they have a poem, the Marion Martel. Uh, it's a bilingual, you can see the, the poem in Spanish and it's a big book. And you can see um, this poem Vinagre, abejas y cabras. It's one of, it's difficult to me to have a favorite poem, but this is one of them. And it is what it is right now. COVID is a situation we have to, that is, it's a situation we have to understand and then we learn and then we understand a little bit more and then the art complete the cycle and uh what are you going to read to us now right now i'm gonna read one of my first poem this poem um this is the poem um i know pedro cavilla my editor with this poem and believe in the power of social media because I published I published this poem on social media, and then he calls me. Uh, my my dream publisher calls me and tell me we have to talk, and this is important to understand. See the poem. The, no, the poem is Caperuza no le teme a nada. Caperuza no le teme a nada, ni al puñal, ni al deseo, ni a las alas. No le teme a su risa, ni a la risa burlona de los, de los que persiguen su desdén. No le teme ni siquiera al silencio, ni a que llene la nada con su incómoda presencia. Caperuza no le teme a los recuerdos, menos al que dejó su padre en su pelvis desnuda. No le teme al frío literal, no le teme al frío poético ni al banal y mucho menos al metafórico. Tiene tiempo sin temerle al fuego ni a las dagas ardientes. No le teme al temor, la muy valiente, no le teme al olvido. Caperuza no le teme al mar ni a las bestias ni al clima. Se mete en la tierra herida y deja que las alimañas coman de su carne viva. 
no le teme al viento, se deja en la brisa y permite que la azote contra las montañas. Desde hace mucho, Caperuza busca miedos nuevos. Se come las espinas buscando sentir el ardor del aviso previo de peligro. Busca en los frascos de su bruja favorita alguna hierba obsesiva que amenace con quitarle la vida. Pero cuando lo intenta, Caperuza se ve sin emociones a la vista y bebe el contenido sin siquiera ver temblar su mano. Caperuza busca ser esclava. Procura tal locura para acudir a un regazo cálido que le quite lo sola y sentirse al fin susceptible a la inclemencia del miedo puro. Uh, so, uh, Riding Hood fears nothing. Riding Hood doesn't fear anything, not the dagger, desire, or the wings. She doesn't fear her own laughter or the giggling mocking of those showing her their disdain. She isn't even afraid of the silence or that it fills the nothingness with its uncomfortable presence. Riding Hood doesn't fear reminiscence, except memories her father left in her naked pelvis. She isn't afraid of, co of the cold that's literal. She doesn't fear the cold that's poetic, banal, banal or, me or much less metaphorical. It's been a while since she feared fire or burning blade. She doesn't fear, she's so brave, she's fearless of oblivion. Riding Hood doesn't fear the sea or beast or the weather. She moves over the wounded earth and lets vermin feed on her living flesh. She doesn't fear the wind. She gives herself to the breeze and allows, allows it to whip against the mountains. For a long time, Riding Hood has been looking for new scares. She eats thorns, wanting to feel the ardor of, dang, of danger warning. She searches the failures of her favorite witch for some obsessive air that threatens to take away her life. But when she tries it, Riding Hood stirs emotionlessly and drinks the contents without her hand even quivering. Riding Hood seeks to be a slave, to procure such madness, to turn a warm lap in order to take away the loneliness and finally feel susceptible to the merciless of fear. Y mira, right now I, I understand uh, a lot of words in that poem because it's already published. Uh, I can't change it. But this uh, poem make me feel how I uh, I understand the, the women's in my work. You know, the Bronx, I'm in the Bronx right now. Are you hear? You heard the music? Mm -hmm. This is the Bronx. And it's like my home. Don't worry. <laughs> It's the same. And when I see the world a uh, slave or this kind of worlds, it's difficult to see it, but I, I defend the complexity of the uh, characters because any character is perfectly made. And when I see this kind of complexity, um, I don't want Caperuza being a, a perfect goddess. Caperuza is a uh, human with a lot of magical um, things in her. And this is important to me to remark right now. This is something important to me to remark because I hear right now this poem again and I see it. Right now, we can open the place for questions. So, um, and um, Dr. Pagón is gonna take over the 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 Q and A. Q &A. Okay, thank you so much. I am feeling my day has been brightened, enlightened, and I feel whole again. Um, so, questions. Anybody have questions? You can put them in the chat, um, or if I think we have enough people here, if you wanna, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand so we can know. We can keep uh, make sure there's only one person talking at a time. So. Floor is open for questions. What inspired you to start writing? Um, I'm inspired about life, in fact. Feel the life in, in me and say, like, understand how it feels to be right here, right now, in this moment. And this is something that starts to 
put my eyes like a big uh, um, receptors of life. And it's important to me to understand that every day because we forget this a lot. I have a, another question in the chat related to writing um, from Christina. Have you ever experienced writer's block? And if so, how did you overcome it? Good every question. week. Every week, every week I have once, every month I have a big one and it's pretty. I learned about um, how brains work. I'm obsessed with, um, in Spanish, the name is um, neurociencia, neuroscientist. And I feel we don't understand our brains. We don't understand how we need, we need to rest, how we, uh, our body um, forced us to rest, to understand how we need to keep calm and understand what that's happened. It's your body telling you something. Um, you need to go outside and with COVID we have a situation, but we can deal with the mask and all other stuff. And writer's block is something, is the ugly part of being a writer and we have to understand the life has ugly parts all right here's another one that popped up in the chat um what's your writing process do you need to be in a certain location or listen to music this is um so complicated and I, and I invite everyone to understand their self to write, understand how you feel, how you consume um, content, how you embrace this kind of content, like and an example. I have a new, I am right, reading my new book um, and I have a history a story about, um, it's, it's complicated, but one son, one son, I repeat that son, three weeks, I don't stop to hear that son. And then that, this story, story become to me the characters and all the stuff, but I was obsessed with that son. And I was questioning myself, okay, Jaisa, why are you listening to son so many times? Just put on a song, girl. Put it you have all that Spotify full of sons. No, I just want to hear um, back that. The, uh, the group is called IFE. Um, and I recommend that group a lot. It's a Cuban book. It's a, it's a Cuban group. And they are amazing. And the sign is back that. It's like a... It's like a revolution, a rebellion, and the, the, the story I, I, I write, it's like a rebellion, and the rhythm of the canción is ta 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 constantly doing that with a lot of um, tambores and, and all the instruments and give you the, these lyrics, complex lyrics. Um, this is the way I feel when when I come to my process. But sometimes it can be a candle. I buy um, a little statue of Bastet, the, the goddess, um, the Egyptian goddess. Um, Bastet, it's an important Egyptian goddess, and I love um, the way Bastet works. And I buy a little statue because I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't know, I really don't know, but my feelings took me in this way and I, I recommend this kind of, um, this kind of method, but um, it's important to work and trying to understand how you work, but work. Don't forget about the, the position you are in right now. You have to work in your in your projects thank you for that so we have a couple of questions in the chat and then um, i'm going to ask a question and then i'm going to have hand it back over to ray um, so questions from a couple of students are um, what your what is your favorite poem that you've written 
And then besides writing, reading, and poetry, what makes you happy? Um, my favorite poem, it's called Mis Perros Prietos en Tu Puerta, My Black Dogs in Your... Um, I forget how to say puerta in English. Do doorway. doorway. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, this is an important poem because this is a freedom poem. And it's um, a poem who put me in a different situation of inspiration and put my brain in other um, station of life. And this is a really important uh, poem. Um, it's in the Ritual Papaya in the book. It's the first one. And it's the first one because the poem deserved, deserved to be the first one. And the other part of the question was? Uh, besides writing, reading, and poetry, what makes you happy? Both. <laughs> because I need both to breathe. <laughs> It's not just about my happiness, it's about my life. No, uh, no, it's, it's a joke because um, you are a, a person know for what you do, it's for what you are. And I'm a person, not just a, a writer. And, but poetry make me feel happy when I read poems who represents me because poetry is a place like literature, it's a place where Black people, women, queer people, and all the spectrum, or uh, sometimes we, we don't have a lot of to, to understand ourselves in the poetry, because sometimes they just um, put away the, po the poetry of these groups. And when you find this kind of poetry, your life changed. And this is why I love to read this poet, this poetry. But um, in fact, I, I'm a creator, and the, I have to, I have to say it. I love to, to do my work. I love it. Excellent. Um, thank you for sharing that. So you had talked earlier. Um, I think when you were talking about solo para locales, mm -hmm. um, about transmitting memories. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about sort of the diff, I know you, you write poetry, but um, I was wondering if you talk about the difference between transmitting memories through poetry versus say prose or a diary or something like that. It's pretty different because poetry have the license to um, put everything is in your head and the way you want to put it. And poetry have this kind of freedom, and gives to you this kind of freedom. And when you are in another, um, in another type of literature, you need to be exquisite, you know, with the memories. And it's something like, you can um, put a lot of things in the memories, but you have to be careful because um, the poem gives you this kind of freedom. The narrative do doesn't. And you need to understand the difference between, but there are a, a different journeys, a pretty different journeys. And I enjoyed to do narrative. And this is my first book of narrative on the next book. And I'm, I'm nervous because I'm playing a lot in this book but the poetry gives me, um, give me the, the, the strong feelings I need to do the, uh, the narrative part. And I think every, every writer, maybe uh, it's, it's a good um, decision to give, give you the opportunity to be in another discipline, you know, just to try and how the freedom of poetry can invite yourself. Thank you. Ray, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, well, um, you know, since the time flies, so we just wanna thank you for being with us today and also take a moment to thank all the, you know, students, faculty and, and personnel of GSU that 
uh, came and, 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 and came to share some time with us. Jaisa, we need to make something else. We, we have to have, bring you again. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you very much. It does, it's a pleasure for me and I pretty I appreciate every opportunity I have. And I'm from this island, this magical place. It's not just a tropical place. It's a complex, um, it's a complex feeling. Just when you look something from Dominican Republic, and remember um, what I say about it because it's from my heart. It's really from my heart. We are we we, we want to go. We are we are putting together a trip to the Dominican Republic. So maybe you, if you're down there, you'll be our ambassador down there. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Um, and 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 thank you, thank you, thank you very much for spending an hour of your day with us today to share some poetry. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Bye bye. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much. And thanks to the people in the chat.